Hallo Stephanie. Hallo Lilu. Stephanie Risley is the author of Love from Both Sides, a true story of soul survival and sacred sexuality. Thank you for being here with me, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. I have a question regarding um, how, uh, uh, how can we actually, in your book, you describe that experience with your husband that suddenly died yeah. and, that, and, and now comes back in your life and you're in communication mm -hmm. with him. And it's unbelievable mm -hmm. the amount of information that you exchange and how you review some of your past, of your experience uh, while you were in couple and physical bodies. Can you, can we all do this? Is that something quite common? What is your experience of it? How can we reach the other side? Well, there it's, that's a good, that's a great question. And it, and everyone is different. Everyone has different kind of wiring. And my husband was a scientist. He actually was a nuclear engineer and worked on the Apollo and did that. And then he was a lawyer. So he was very, very um, analytical. And I had, I had experience with this kind of thing from the moment I I was born. I would have bleed through um, experiences from my last life. So I sort of had an open, a much more open mind. And um, I had had experience, my sister, my little sister had uh, committed suicide. She had come back to me and and talked and, and I could experience her but I kind of like waved it away as something just my being crazy mm. it was when he came mm. back so intensely that I um I had no choice but to listen to him can you after, describe after that experience died, well what happened was when he died I actually had my hand on his heart and um And as, as, as his heart stopped, I was in such shock. I heard him behind me saying, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I'm free at last. And I went, what? You're free? Free of what? Free of me? Free of us? You can't die. And I went into shock. Luckily for me, in the same room stood my 28-year-old studio executive, no-nonsense stepson by the name of Sam. And he heard his dad, too, say, John, John. James, Sam, Sam, I'm so, I'm not dead. This is far out. So he wasn't dead. To, he was in my stepson's head. And, and so he kept in contact with my stepson, but he couldn't get into contact with me because I was filled with this haze, this thick mm. haze of mourning, of sadness. It wasn't until I actually broke out of it and went to a different, what, what um, Elizabeth Kuber Ross would call a different phase of mourning, which would be anger or I went from denial into anger to all the different stages. But at some point, my husband died, leaving me in $180,000 worth of debt. With I didn't have a job. I didn't know what I was going to do. No insurance, no retirement. Hello, it's where everybody seems to be now. It's great. Oh. It puts you... In, in connection with with parts of you like put me that I didn't know I had I had no idea I was so brave and I'm very pleased to have found that out although it was hard finding it out but anyway I got together a group of girls of women who were all I was writing a book called the married girl's guide to hot and sacred sex before Dan died because I had gotten married late and I knew that um, sex was the connective tissue for a marriage. So I got these women together. I was going to interview them about how they kept their marriages going. I mean, what do you do? You've got a full-time job. You've got a husband. who's right. You've got the kids. When do you have time for sex? And we're just sitting around talking. I'm interviewing them. And I realized, oh, my God, of all these women, I'm the only person who is no longer married and is no longer having any kind of sex, at least with live people. And so huh. I literally got filled with this heaviness that I, it was like, I thought, oh my God, I'm getting the flu. I better get out of here because I have all of these moms. So I took myself home. The next morning was a Sunday. Once again, it's only four months into my morning and morning sucks. It's so painful. And I woke up again and I was miserable and I'm crying and I'm, and I'm, 
And I take out my journal and I go, and I go, I miss him so much. And I went, wait a minute, it's Sunday. If he were here, he would be working on his computer, watching a football game, a basketball game, whatever. And he'd ignore me anyway. It just teaches you to die. So I got mad. And because of that, I heard, it was like a buzz in my ear, a buzz, like somebody oh. shot my ear and it said, and I heard very clearly, put the pin in your other hand, put the pin in your other hand, meaning my Don dominant hand. It's the hand that connects to the right lobe, which is the place that you can get connection, connection from the in between. I put my hand on my, that pin in my hand and my hand, it just hurt, but I could write out, I, I, it was, you are my goddess now and forever. We walked a life that allowed me to love more authentically than ever before. Forgive yourself for not being Superman and forgive your wow. and forgive me for not appreciating you more. And that and then and then I just looked at it. I mean I, I actually could find the journal that I wrote that and it's around here someplace because the writing is really hard. But um, that was he started out with actually D E W his his initials and I had no idea what that meant. At that I went, what? And um, but from then on, he was able to actually communicate through that arm and through this. And that's what the, the book, the book is actually the conversation. Yeah. It's conversations with the, from this dead husband who is now in full regret that he didn't appreciate the goddess who mm. was there for him. And he took a lot of our life for granted because of, of problems that he had in accepting many things. And that's the conversation we have ultimately in the book though. This is <laughs> what, what there's, there's a part where, um, uh, just so many magical things happen. Like I kept getting the impulses and when you going back to your question, how, how do people get in touch? Listen to your impulses. I kept getting impulses during this time to go to a local bookstore called the Bodhi Tree. It's the local LA um, metaphysical bookstore. And uh, and if I had, I could I couldn't do anything besides just do what I was doing. And I thought I'm not going to the Bodhi Tree. You know, so on. But what happened was because I didn't go to the Bodhi Tree, I out of nowhere two books arrived on my doorstep and they were Michael Newton's book, Journey of Souls and Destiny of Souls. And they're all about souls talking from the in-between. Mm. And in that book, there's all of this information about how souls connect. And um, one of the souls, it talks about the different colors of souls. And, and I am sort of like talking to Dan about the book in, in the channeling. And I'm saying, so what do you think about these colors of souls? I mean, wh that doesn't make any sense. And I, he says, well, I said, so what color are, there's a gradation. It goes from white soul. The white is a new soul, a brand new baby soul. A lot of baby souls around. They're all driving Lexuses and they live in Bel Air, you know, because <laughs> white soul, baby souls. No, they have to have stuff. They have to have all the toys, you know, and then there goes, then it goes white to gold to blue to purple. Okay. So I said, so, and, and by this time we've had, uh, uh, we've gotten in touch with oversouls. This is quite a, this is, this is, this is through the book, but the, yeah. Um, and we'll I, get into more details actually in another question. I really yeah. want to hear everything that you've learned from Dan uh, on past okay. life, after life and, and, and all our human yeah, potential. Lives. So, um, well, thank you for now. Let's, let's do that in part two of this interview. So okay. since we need to keep it down to 10 minutes, this oh, is don't. Stephanie Risley. She's the author of love from both sides. Absolutely amazing book that I highly recommend. I'll see you shortly, Stephanie. Oh, thank you, Lilu. Bye. <laughs>